Hey guys, so today I wanted to take a look at the Walk 2019 middle qualifier because I thought it was a really interesting course when I looked at it during the time that Walk was happening and I haven't got a chance to really analyze any of the Walk races yet. So yeah, let's take a look. So to start with the analysis, I want to take a look at the map as a whole. So I did a little bit of research and it seemed that during the middle it was relatively open terrain visibility wise. Runnability wise it was okay, it was typical Scandinavian terrain with like all the rocky, mossy, bumpy stuff that is pretty freaking annoying to run through but you can run through it if you're willing to destroy your legs in the process. But like I said, it was pretty, it seemed pretty open in terms of visibility and again, relatively runnable. Anyways, uh, so a few things to take, down, take note of when taking a first look at a map like this is what is there and what is not there. So there is a lot of white open forest. Uh, it is relatively, relatively vague contours um, as you see there's this large hillside in the east and a little more detail in the west here towards the last part of the course um, there are very few trails uh, but there are a decent number of linear features including these rivers cliffs marshes a lot of little like contour features that are linear um, yeah so it looks really interesting um, so let's take a look at some of the top runners and their routes to each control um, I'll add Anton and Jordan's routes as well we can kind of see what everyone's thinking not sure why the colors are literally exactly the same Actually, no, I'm colorblind, but they're almost exactly the same. So, <clears throat> let's see. From the start, they run down the chute, they get to the start, and yeah, let's see, hold on. Let me do a split analysis to number one. So, it seems that Anton here made a little mistake, um, but the route seemed relatively straightforward. People kind of just came straight out of the start. And I'm not sure if they went around the back of these cliffs, it's possible. Or if they went kind of like following this line of cliffs as a good handrail and coming in to the reentrant that number one was in. Um, yeah, that's it's a pretty easy control. Number two. Here, Jordan made a mistake. Let me go back a little. Yeah, it seems that like Jordan made a small mistake here. Um, but again, the fastest route, relatively straight, because you have this super clear handrail, which is this spur, and your the feature that you're attacking is very clear again this relatively large reentrant and you have this big spur behind it as sort of a catching feature so you can be pretty confident coming into this control as long as you don't come in too far to the side here because there's really nothing that can catch you back here as Jordan saw he kind of just kept going until he hit he passed the stream and saw the contours passed uh, all the streams and realized he went too far and had to go back. So yeah, making sure you're on a good compass coming out of the control, maybe pinpointing one of these features is a good idea, and then being confident coming in uh, and making sure you're not too high are all important things uh, for this control. So number three, again, relatively straight routes this control i feel like is a little trickier than the other ones although no one really made mistakes here um 
So I think one of the important things for a leg like this is identifying where exactly you're going to attack from as there's not much detail uh, before the control. So uh, one thing you can read maybe is this little reentrant as these two contours are significantly farther apart than these two. So you can judge the steepness <clears throat> of the hill and use that as uh, your attack or your approach at least into the circle. And like I said, the visibility was relatively good in this white forest, meaning that as long as you get into the circle and keep your head up, you're most likely going to be able to see the control or the feature relatively easily. Uh, as for getting to the control uh, or getting to uh, the circle, uh, definitely want to make sure you're picking off these cliffs and taking a relatively good compass so you don't somehow end up too high on in these cliffs and making like a parallel mistake there and ending up way too high as you can lose a lot of time. So number three to four. This is a difficult leg in my opinion because of all the linear features that you're crossing perpendicularly uh, without really much uh, good linear handrails that you can use to basically run uh, as fast as you want without worrying about losing time or not knowing where you are. So it seems like straight was the best option which makes sense as there's not really a good reason to go around because there's not much better features to follow other than what's on the line. So it looks like the reason that straight was good is that um, basically by staying on the line, you can pinpoint certain point features uh, to make sure you're staying on the line. And you kind of just have to be careful on something like this, or at least I would be careful, um, making sure that I don't drift too far, checking off features every certain amount of distance and making sure I look at my compass every once in a while to make sure I'm not like completely drifting off or making a huge mistake. So like I said, go on the line, pick out certain details while you're, uh, while you're looking at your compass, maybe this boulder, depending on how visible the boulders are there, which hopefully all these athletes know because they trained in this terrain for a long period of time. So whether or not the boulders are reliable is an important thing to consider like before entering a world championships race. So maybe they can pick off this boulder or this uh, old boulder pile, I believe. Uh, and then this uh, another pile of boulders and yeah, a lot of contours on this hill. This reentrant might be pretty clear and this spur with the cliffs and the knoll. Uh, should be relatively obvious along with maybe this form line reentrant, which may or may not be as obvious, but picking off these certain key features um, on the way while you're on your line instead of just looking at your compass is really important for a long leg like this where you're trying to stay rel relatively straight on the line. So number five relatively straightforward. Uh, so you see that all four of them, or at least most of them, uh, leaned a little bit to this, to like above the line. And I believe that the reason for that, or at least my reason for that would be to kind of make sure that I hit, or at least I see this reentrant that goes down the hill and kind of use it as a handrail to guide myself into the less um, visible reentrant that number five is in. If you just go straight on the line, there's not really much you can use to make sure that you're perfectly on the line. And since you're going downhill, a compass could, uh, could work if you're confident in that. But for me, uh, I feel like my compass downhill could definitely be off by a little bit. Uh, maybe that would be enough to miss the reentrant, and in this case, if you miss it, it's kind of difficult to relocate. You can maybe use this cliff or the spur, but if you just lean a little north, then you hit this. You can see the reentrant, use it as a handrail, and kind of guide your way into five, like most people did. Number six, um, 
It is a relatively vague leg, but I'm not sure how difficult it would be. Uh, if it's on the bottom of the cliff, if it's behind the cliff, which it most likely is, let me double check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's below the cliff, so you kind of have to be careful coming in. You do have these rocks on the way. Um, let me let you see those. So you do have these rocks kind of on the line guiding you in, but I think you have to be pretty confident on your compass on a control like this because uh, you don't really have much of anything uh, really guiding you into this control. You can maybe use the slant of the hillside because uh, this, the when you're getting close to the control, the spur comes out much more than it does uh, when you're on the way to your, the control. And if you go past it, the spur kind of will fall back again, and you see this reentrant kind of coming up. So relatively tricky control. Uh, again, to recap, my strategy would just be relatively keep a relatively good compass. Use the boulders to. Um, make sure I'm staying on my compass coming out of the boulders and make sure I'm really careful with my compass and maybe look up and look at this hillside to kind of see where it sticks out to where number six is. Number seven, um, again kind of traversing the side hill of, of a relatively vague hillside. It's important to be able to pick off features on the way so that you know where you are. Uh, but you can also follow some of these linear features, for example, uh, as most people did, they kind of just ran on a rough compass and caught this reentrant uh, coming up past where they already came through before. And they can pick off this uh, probably ex very visible uh, null spur combo with the cliffs, uh, the, the huge wombo combo in the forest uh, that they can use to make sure that they're still on the line. <clears throat> and from here, let me move them back so we can see a little better. Uh, it, is, it gets a little more vague, but since they're already coming through uh, below this, they almost want to stay on the same contour, maybe drop a little. Uh, so as long as they keep a good compass and make sure that they're not climbing or dropping too much, uh, then hitting this cliff should be relatively straightforward especially if you uh, see the one before it. Let me check. Yeah, most of them came right past the one before it, meaning that they could see it and then they know exactly where they are when entering the circle, which makes for really nice entry and a really nice control. So let's move this along. Number eight, uh, this control seems interesting again. Kind of have to just drop down the hillside uh, you have this little reentrant thing guiding you. I'm not sure if they really used it. Yeah, it looks like they just dropped uh, relatively quickly. Uh, and I think one of the benefits of that is that they all hit this, or they all at least saw this uh, stream coming up and this reentrant almost like perfectly aiming them into the control. So if you do drop, hit that stream, then like I said, you basically just have a perfect entry between the cliffs and this hill to get into the control and yeah it's relatively relatively straightforward um i guess somewhere you can make a mistake is if you stay too high and get caught above these cliffs you could be in trouble so like i said it is beneficial to drop early because even if you drop really early like straight down to the marsh then you follow it up follow the reentrant stream and you have a wonderful attack into number eight. Number nine, uh, this control, some variation in the routes. Um, this seems a lot more complicated than the previous ones because of all the cliffs in the way of getting there, essentially. So an important thing to consider is where you're gonna cross these cliff lines, especially this one here and this one here. Uh, it looks like it picked, people picked a few different options. Uh, this one was pretty popular, this cliff opening, uh, as it's quite wide. 
this one uh anton dropped through looks like it worked pretty well for him um and then this next line of cliffs uh jordan came all the way around the bottom Lunanez straight through the middle and then Huben and Anton kind of went above. Um, I like Lunanez's route on this one because uh, he kind of yeah, he kind of like aims below the line to kind of contour around these hills rather than straight up climb them. If you stay lower on these hills then there's less climb uh, to consider when versus when uh, staying above the line where you have to climb all the contours without necessarily being able to contour around the spurs as much as uh, Lunanez was able to and that's kind of seen in his split here which was uh, almost a good 20 seconds faster than Hoobman. Um, yeah, this is a good leg. Uh, I think you have to definitely be very focused on a leg like this. Uh, figure out where you're going through each line of cliffs and uh, to do that you want to take relatively good compass bearings and again picking off certain features uh, on the way to each line of cliffs and then once you pass these two lines of cliffs it's relatively uh, relatively straightforward coming into number nine as you got these this wide open hillside to read and uh, the entry into number nine uh, coming in from the bottom should be relatively straightforward. So number 10, um, again, this is an interesting leg. There's not much uh, to read in between nine and 10 uh, point feature wise. There is a decent amount of vegetation and uh, open area not sure how visible it is again like maybe this open air open clearing is very visible maybe it's not maybe the green is easy to read maybe not but um it seems like straight was the best option here as you can read the re-entrant uh right in the middle of the control doesn't look like they went right past the cliff but it's possible that they saw this cliff too to confirm again that they're on the line uh, and then 11 again just reading the contours here this is different than most of the other controls where you're focused on your compass and picking off certain uh, checkpoints on your compass to make sure you're staying on the line in this case I feel like it's pretty easy to read the contours as you kind of just running over a spur and then down back into a re-entrant and then you're coming around the nose of this wide spur into the re-entrant that uh, 11 is on and the cliff also should be relatively uh, a relatively good feature to use to confirm that you're entering the circle the right way so as we're coming to the end here we get a, another interesting leg um, it looks relatively open, so you probably just want to take a rough bearing and just run as hard as you can to this trail. Uh, and then once you hit this trail, it's really easy to tell where you are because you have all this open land and a lot of stuff to read to pinpoint exactly where you are. And then from there, uh, it looks like they just continued straight, uh, aiming a little high or a little above the line uh, to avoid the the steep cliffs here by the stream so they kind of come up just hit the trail keep going cross the uh, open area and then once you get on this uh, spur and hillside you have a relatively clean attack into number 12 because you can't really go past it as there's this uh, small re-entrant like right past it that will catch you um, but that does show another reason why staying high is probably a good idea so that if you do um, miss 12 uh, and if you're missing high this uh, re-entrant that comes up the spur should be relatively visible and should stop you from making a mistake there uh, so 
12 to 13. Pretty short legs, straight. Make sure you take a good compass out of the controls so you don't lose uh, time running the wrong direction at first and correcting yourself. Uh, 14 is in the same direction, so you probably can just keep running. Uh, yeah, not worth going to the trail. Everyone just runs straight and finish. So that was a. I really like this course. Um, I think some the the good strategies really ended up being um, follow linear handrails when you can. Like for example, number one, number two are good examples. Um, number seven, you can follow it for the first half. Uh, and when you can't, then you want to kind of stay on a compass and follow the line, essentially. And line orienteering basically consists of looking at your compass, making sure you're staying on your line. But not only doing that, you're also checking, you're also looking around and picking out certain features that are visible to you and deciding uh, that yes that's roughly the right distance away or yes this is supposed to be on my line and i'm passing right by it perfect and all these things make sure that you're staying on your line and uh nailing the control just like number four which is a great example um yeah really interesting course uh good job from everyone uh it's pretty complicated Especially coming into the end here, number nine, very tricky control, and yeah, it's a great course.